Hey guys, welcome back to Angry Mac Adventures and in today's video we are installing probably one of the most important accessories on the boat and that is a bilge pump, so stick around. Alrighty guys, so I'm just gonna go through everything that you need to install a bilge pump. Now, uh, first things first is of course your bilge pump. So uh, you can get different makes and models and stuff like that, but the, the one thing that does change is your GPH, which stands for gallons per hour. Uh, this uh, tends to change depending on the size of your boat. So you can get uh, 300, 350, 500 GPH. You can get uh, up to maybe two, 3,000 GPH, just depending on the size of your boat. Uh, but for this 5.6 meter, uh, the 500 GPH from uh, Johnson, the SBX Flow, is uh, a great size for my little Voyager. So we've got the bilge pump. Next up, you'll need a switch. So this is a manual auto switch because we are going to be installing uh, a float switch in the boat as well. So definitely recommended to get one of those three-way switches. Uh, just a little bit of uh, tinned cable. Make sure it is tinned because you are putting it in the boat. Uh, what differs tin from copper is that copper goes black with the salt water and the corrosion so uh, you get a lot of life out the, the tinned cable. Next up you've got your flex pipe or your drainage uh, for your discharge of water. Uh, you can get this in a variety of sizes and uh, material as well. I like this stuff here because it's nice and flexible and you can really um, get in to where you want it to be. Just a couple of little clamps to clamp that down and of course your float switch. Now your float switch is something that I believe that you really need on a boat and that's for more safety aspects of things. Now what the float switch is or what it looks like, now what this does is this is actually a sensor to turn your bilge pump on automatically no matter what the reason is. So just say you uh, have a lot of water in the well that you don't know about from anything really, from your deck wash, uh, from splashback, uh, having holes in your hull, or even if you didn't put your bung on properly, um, sometimes where your bilge pump is situated, you might not even be able to tell that water uh, is getting taken on board on your boat. So this little switch here uh, pretty much turns on your bilge pump automatically. Now, what the idea is, is when the water starts to rise, this then starts to rise as well because it's uh, buoyant and you've got like this little ball inside here and as soon as the ball, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but as soon as the ball pivots towards the center, can you hear that? Then it activates the switch which turns on the pump automatically. So as soon as you hear that pump going, that means you've got a problem or um, it's just doing the work for you. So, and that's when that three-way switch comes in handy. So we'll definitely be installing one of these today. Um, not every single boat has them. Some, some boats uh, don't have them. Some boats have alarms as well. So when you get to a certain point uh, in the well, feels that there's water there, then the alarm will go off, which signals you to turn your bilge pump on. But uh, I think these work great and they're only about 30, 40 bucks. So uh, not that expensive and it could save your boat. So there we go. That's everything that you need. Um, let's get to it. I've just made a quick diagram on this little bit of cardboard. Now I'll do a bit of a zoom up. This is a very basic drawing of how everything works and how the float switch pump and the battery gets all connected and through the toggle switch. Now, uh, hopefully you can see this right, but all your little honeycombs here are your negatives. So uh, just a quick rundown is you've got your battery, which is located here. Your positive runs through the fuse to number two on your toggle switch. Uh, the positive of your pump goes through uh, the positive of the float switch, which hooks up to number three on the toggle switch. And then you've got your, your float switch that comes through number one, and that hooks up uh, to your switch and uh, number seven which hooks up to your switch as well. So uh, there's plenty of diagrams out there but this is what I'm going to be running with. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. There are plenty of diagrams on the internet uh, to help you guys out. Let's get rid of that. Now first things first is yesterday I did install the switch. So all I did was I just cut out below the switch panel uh, with the jigsaw. I marked it out, cut it out 
and then uh, made sure that that switch was nicely secured with some silicon and a couple of screws. That is now mounted in and all dried up. So what's left to do is to run the cables. I'll run those through now and then I'll take you to the bottom of the boat. It's a little bit hard to get me and everything that's happening here because of uh, my wide lens. Yeah, I can't zoom out anymore. Might be able to push the box out a little bit. Essentially what you want to do is install your bilge pump uh, towards the back of the boat. In my instance, I've got like a little well right at the bottom where all um, the water comes down from the center of the boat, uh, the stringers and stuff like that and uh, they all work their way towards this little well here. So that's where I'll be installing it. Now, I've just ran the wires. I've got four wires here. I only need three, but I have ran uh, four anyway. So I can um, use one as a spare, which is fine. I'll bring you in close to show you guys what we're doing. And uh, hopefully you learn a thing or two. Here's everything here. We've got our main cable coming through from the switches. We've got our float switch cabling and our bilge pump. So as per the diagram, we're just going to grab one of the positives of the float switch and the bilge. And uh, those two there go together uh, to the main source there of my switch panel. Now, just before we start soldering, I have got a bit of marine heat shrink there. Now, the difference between normal heat shrink and marine heat shrink, it's got like a bead of glue that goes through the middle of the heat shrink because you don't want water penetrating through your cable. Once we get heat into that cable, that the solder penetrates through as best as we can. Alrighty, so once you know you've got a solid connection, I'm just gonna now run my heat shrink over the top just like so and finish off the connection with the heat shrink. Alrighty, so next up, we're just going to be running the negative um, side of the bilge pump straight to the switch. So that's one side done. Now we're just going to finish off the float switch, uh, which is just a single wire that goes to uh, the switch and uh, we're done here. That's all done guys. So your float switch is hooked up, the bilge pump's hooked up and that is ready to get installed inside. I'm just going to neaten up the wires. Now I'm gonna leave them at this length because if something does happen, then I've got um, the ability to pull it out and see what's wrong instead of trying to work in a confined space where the wires aren't that long. I'm actually going to sticker flex these to um, the fiberglass hull. The um, only reason being is that I'm not gonna screw it down into the hull because I don't have um, a beam there that I can do that to. And uh, to be honest with you, sticker flex will be fine or marine silicon uh, will be absolutely fine for this application. So I'm just going to neaten up the wires a little bit Stick flex is down, remembering that your float switch to be just that little bit higher than the motor, otherwise you will wear the motor out if this is running and there's no water there. Alrighty, so last steps, just hooking up the, the hose to the discharge port. Now, that is literally just held on with uh, one of these clamps. So, that goes on first. That gets pushed through just like that and tightened up. Not too tight because it is plastic. Just enough to stick down. And uh, then I've just got a weight just to hold it down. I've taken the, the motor out so I can sit it in position where I want it. And then, um, then we can put the engine in later. So it's the next day and it's all nice and dry. Now, the la one of the last things we've got to do at the bottom of the boat is installing the discharge hose. Now, I'm not sure if you can see. Um, there we are, look at that. So this is uh, the, the back of the skin fitting. So I'm just gonna run my hose nice and neat. So it runs with all the other wiring. That just gets plugged in at the back of the skin fitting just like that. Alrighty guys, so I'm just at the back of the dash. That's what it's looking like at the moment. Um, now, because I'm going to be running the bilge pump on constant power and not going through a switchboard, I had to run constant power to a bus port. So I ended up purchasing another one from the boat shop and I'm going to be installing it on this side of the dash. So uh, I can run constant power to the bilge pump so I can leave it on automatic. And uh, if I ever need um, power to um, anything else that doesn't require a switchboard, um, I can run it through that, so that's no worries at all. 
Alrighty guys, there she is there. So we've got our main power going through that fuse there, as you can see, and that's just powering that bus port. And of course you've got your positive coming from the bilge pump, and then you've got your float switch wire, which I've got to uh, splice up as well, and that hooks up to the back of the switch as per the diagram. That is it for the installation of the bilge pump. So let's make sure that everything works. We'll put the, the battery on, and uh, what we'll do is we'll just check the, the manual of the bilge pump to make sure the switch is working correctly and then we'll check and make sure that the auto is working as well so we'll just push that float switch up and make sure that the bilge pump engages. Now I'm just going to turn that switch on and we're just going to make our way to the front dash. Sorry there's a bit of mess everywhere. I might even turn this on. So I've unhooked the transducer I don't think you guys saw that in the last episode, so beautiful, that's all getting booted up. How good does a screen look? Man, I can't wait, hey. Alrighty, well, this is the main star of the show this episode. So this is the switch here, you've got auto, off and manual. So if you hit manual, oh beautiful, look at that. You can hear that engine going in the background, I hope. you got off and then you've got manual, So if you uh, auto, sorry. So if you flick it to auto, a little light shows in the switch panel there, and that is now on auto. Oh, man. Register now. Unbelievable where echo sounders have come. All right, so anyways, we'll get back to it. So that switch is now on auto. So if I go to the back of the boat, I know it's gonna be hard for you guys to see this. If I actually lift this little switch up, you can probably hear the engine. Look at that, off on. Wow, that works so good. All right, I'm happy with that. And um, of course you've got off, turn that off and we can turn this off as well. Right, so I've hooked this up to the main power. So when I do power the boat on, it is gonna stay off, but um, I've got a switch here and there's no point putting it on the switch panel. So that's all hooked up separately, but uh, that works great. All righty guys, that is it for another episode. I hope you enjoyed it. That is the basics to installing a a uh, bilge pump and a float switch. So everything works just as it's supposed to. I'm really, really happy with that. The last thing I've got to do now is just install a hatch. So you would have seen the cutout at the back there. I'm just gonna install a nice hatch so it's easy access um, if the bilge shits itself or I need to give it a clean. But other than that, uh, that's it for this episode and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.